Welcome everyone, Christine here with my campaign overview guide for Heinrich Kemmler of the Vampire Counts in Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. The Vampire Counts are one of the best races in the game and all of their legendary lords, including Kemmler, are fairly strong. No AI intro for this one, some people have been complaining about it. Personally, I do like it. I, I did find it very funny initially when I started using it for Forgrim and Carl Franz and roasting Skarsnik. But I do think a bit of variety when it comes to that can be useful. Um, actually introducing new voices and it can be a bit complicated and actually making them sound as the characters in the game. But anyway, um, I'm not necessarily going to use it for all the videos going forward, though I am going to still uh, use it. I think it does add that value and it does make the video look better in the algorithm. So let's talk about Kemmler. Faction, benefit-wise, he gets experience gain for Necromancer, diplomatic relations with the Chaos Factions. This is actually going to be fairly substantial in just a moment. And a raised at cost, as well as an immunity to Chaos Undivided Corruption and Chaos Waste Attrition. So if you do decide to head over here for whatever reason in the Chaos Waste, you have immunity. Now, I personally take the view that if you're playing Kemmler, that's the last thing you want to do in your campaign. But the benefit to diplomatic relations with the Warriors of Chaos and Demons of Chaos mean that means that you can make a deal of some kind of description with Bellacor so he doesn't harass you the entire campaign. Because here's the thing for every legendary lord that starts in your Bellacor minus Wolfric. But if you're talking about the Leafanar, if you're talking about Lu and Leon Kor, uh, then what Bellacor tends to do in his campaign is he harasses the shit out of you. And he's not a major threat. And in fact, you actually want him to do so because he has a really really good defeat trait but it certainly can be really annoying having to deal with the constant raids by bellicor and having to keep one army at all times a powerful enough army to be able to defeat them and it's not like bellicor is going to throw weak armies at you you do actually need a fairly substantial force to defeat them it's also a good way to get certain powerful traits for your lords uh for your lords and legendary lords either way as Kemmler, you do have that diplomatic benefit. Now, Kemmler is back basically a two-in-one package as a legendary lord. He does get a replenishment in foreign territory, which is always nice. Wins a magic cost minus 10% for lords, uh, lore of empire and ability lord of undeath. Now, this gives you Krell as a summon that won't degrade. This is fairly substantial in terms of combat ability because... You have a powerful caster in Krell, and he is a pretty powerful caster. And then you, uh, you sorry, you have a powerful a caster in terms of Kemmler, and then you have a powerful melee lord in terms of Krell. Now, he's obviously not going to be as good as, say, a Malice Darkblade or a Scarbrand or any lord that has items associated with that, right? But he still will be a fairly substantial benefit. And he is a summon. Remember this. He's not a regular lord. He is a summon. Now, uh, when it comes to the special skill line, yeah, you do have a major way to improve Krell's combat ability. Uh, you have horrible regeneration for wraiths and hex wraiths. On top of that, you get uh, barrow kings, so you can get more of them in the campaign, having plus two of them, so up to three in your campaign early on is certainly a nice benefit. Campaign movement range. Uh, devastating Flatanker uh, for Wraiths, bonus versus infantry, as well as wins a magic benefit, greater arcane conduit, and a raised at cost of minus 35%. That minus 35% is actually a very substantial benefit, because then you also have to consider the upkeep benefit you get for, skeletal, uh, for zombies and skeletal warriors, and then there's also the Frawl Master, which reduces it further by 15%. So you're looking... That's a legendary lord that's reducing the raised dead cost by minus 50%. And then, of course, he has some pretty decent items as well. Casualty replenishment, 3%. Some pretty nice things over here. But you also have to consider the minus 10%. So you're reducing the raised dead cost by 60%. So you fight a major battle. You want to raise those higher, higher tier units for the vampire counts. Kemmler can do it in a way... No one else can. He's actually the original Necromancer in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. I mean, the Gash came later. And when I say original, I mean in the sense that timeline-wise, yes, Nagash was the first, uh, or one of the first, but Kemmler was the original character they created as a Necromancer. Games Workshop created as a Necromancer. 
Now, he does obviously have a powerful army. Raise Dead is always really, really good uh, to have, and reducing the cost of that by a substantial amount even better. So over here, you know, if if I, I can start a campaign basically with 16 units and just drown Bretonia in blood. You do start with something of an annoying start position, I would have to say, in the sense that you do have a good benefit here for from Castle Drakenfell's catacombs from the Blackstone Post. You basically have Drakenfell's uh, castle, which does have uh, which does have a landmark. You you actually start with one, and then you get an another one, the, the catacomb. So you start. Actually, what the hell is this? This is <laughs> this is bizarre a bit, really. I, I'll be honest with you. This is this feels a bit like a bit of a bug. I'm not sure if this is intended, but anyway, you get the catacombs, um, and you then get um, you you also get uh, dark uh, iron, in this. Now, the annoying thing about it, though, is that one of the settlements is close by, but the other one is over here in Groom Zint, which Lewin is going to take. Now, climate-wise, you can get mountains, wasteland, temperate, and desert. So you do actually have the ability to take over territory all the way from Bretonia over here to the entire empire, to the mountains surrounding the empire, to the badlands, and even the desert. That is actually a very substantial amount of territory and it's not like the jungle is that unfavorable either that is a ridiculous amount of territory and there's actually very few legendary lords in the campaign uh, in the game that have access to that kind of wide swath of territory being able to take the entirety of the balance the mountains as well as the empire in bretonia is a very substantial situation indeed and that gives you power because you don't have to spend as much money dealing with that pleasant climate yes there are mods for it but when making these videos i consider the vanilla situation not the modded situation anyway so you have the ability as vampire clowns to recruit a lot of units now here's the thing you're obviously not going to have the same kind of combat power as vlad or isabella or even manfred but you do have krell to make up for that to a certain extent though vlad and isabella are always going to be better when it comes to pure combat ability but here's the thing that Vlad and Isabella don't have, but you do have. You don't have any major opponent to deal with in this particular campaign. Because Bretonia, yeah, they have knights. They can be dangerous in an open field. They're worthless on... Uh, in. They're worthless in a siege battle, and there's a lot of siege battles to be had over here, which means more hero capacity that you can increase if you can get them to tier 4. The vampire counts to have good growth. And you can just wipe out everyone. The only one that can be a threat is Lewin, because he does have a pretty powerful army over there, and he personally is very powerful, but you wipe him out pretty quickly. And you also have another benefit in this particular campaign, in the sense that you have the Red Duke very close by, and you can save him. Most of the time when it comes to the Red Duke, the problem uh, the problem is getting him. Because actually getting him can be an issue if you're playing any other Legendary Lord of the Vampire Counts. Because he tends to get wiped out by Bretonia in the current situation. Even though he does have a fairly substantial garrison in his settlement. And it's a powerful garrison too. Um, if you're playing as Luwin, you don't want to rush uh, Musalan, by the way. Because that's just going to get you killed. Um... But if you're playing Kemmler, you can confederate, make an alliance, and eventually confederate the Red Duke, which he will also give you a really powerful army and a powerful legendary lord in your campaign. So that is a good amount of power, and the factions surrounding you are relatively weak factions. Karl Franz is not substantial enough to stop you. Lewin can pose a good fight with the one army he has, but after that he's a speed bump. And Grom, Grom is going to run into issues fighting the Wood Elves and Bretonia over here. You could make a deal with him. You could take his territory for yourself. There are certainly benefits to it either way. Personally, I don't enjoy allying Greenskins all that much in my campaigns just because they can't, I can't trade with them, right? And a lot of factions will hate you if you make alliances with the Greenskins. So making an alliance with Grom may not necessarily be in your best interest. Making an alliance with Take a Claw, on the other hand, and taking all of this territory for yourself, that's a different discussion. Though, of course, uh, Afaloran is an inhabitable climate, so it's not really worth going into. 
But you do have flexibility in this campaign. This is the critical part. If we're looking at the victory conditions, you do need to wipe out Durfa for your short cam campaign victory condition, but your short campaign victory condition isn't really the important thing that you want to get over here. It's a long campaign victory condition for the Winds of Magic benefit that you want to pick up. You do need a short one, but you don't need to rush and deal with Durfa. Durfa won't necessarily achieve much in this campaign, and you can decide to wait and pick your fight. Since you do have that diplomatic relations with Norska, with Warriors of Chaos, uh, Demons of Chaos, Beastmen, and Norska, you can actually do something many campaigns can't do. You can expand over here to the northern side of the Empire safely. The problem in doing that, let's, let's say as Karl Franz or other factions, is that generally speaking the Norskan factions will declare war on you. Well, if you're playing as uh, Kamler, you won't necessarily have that issue. In your campaign. So the Empire and Bretonia are both ripe for the taking. I would personally take Northern Bretonia, uh, make a deal with the Duke, maybe wipe out Dr Grom or make an alliance with Grom, try and not hold the coastline. Let the Red Duke hold the coastline because that might just piss off uh, Wolf One. And the last thing you want to have happening in this campaign is Wolf One just deciding that you're an ant that needs to be crushed under their boot heel. Because the last thing you want to happen in your campaign is for Tyrion, Alariel, and Elfarion to just declare all, all of them war on you. It's a fight you can win, but it will be a costly and pointless affair that you don't need at all to happen in your campaign. It would be best avoided. So let the Red Duke deal with this. The way you help him is you deal with Leoncourt. So you take uh, you take this settlement over here, or you take Artois' army here. Um, and then you may or may not take the settlement, but you should also deal with the dwarves over here in this uh, in this particular province. So you should take these two provinces, like Bastan and Artois. And then after that, uh, you should go and deal with Leonker. Just bring in two full stacks of troops, zombies, uh, zombie skeletal warriors, all that good stuff, and you'll be in a really good situation. When it comes to the bloodlines, my recommendation is to actually go for the Von Karstein as the first one. This will give you Sylvanian Crossbowmen. And then go for Lamian. Or start with Lamian and then go for Karstein. The cost will increase. Uh, but you do want to get the Lamian second tier quickly. The reason you want to do so is because this can give you good relations with the Empire. Yes, the Empire does have an aversion of minus 40. So the Lamian one actually does a lot to deal with that aversion. Because you don't necessarily need to fight Karl Franz or all the electric counts right off the bat you will want to do so they've got good provinces good opportunities you do want to do so and hell you want to make your way all the way to sylvania to be the crap out of vlad and force him to bend the knee eventually or make an alliance with him or save vlad because vlad does tend to lose his campaign in the long term against the empire so you do want to save vlad and you're actually ideally uh, suited to confederate with vlad so you'll get isabella as well get the red duke so you have two other uh, lords, legendary lords. I mean, the Red Duke isn't playable, but he is a legendary lord. So you can get Vlad, Isabella, and the Red Duke pretty quickly, uh, or reasonably quickly in this campaign. That is a significant amount of power. The Red Duke is really powerful. Vlad and Isabella are really powerful as well. And you can expand all the way from Bretonia to Sylvania, conquering the territory of the Empire. The diplomatic benefit is that you, is, is so you don't have to end up fighting a lot of factions at once. Now, here's the thing to know when you're playing the Vampire Counts. Your army won't be good in auto resolve, so you'll have to fight a lot of battles manually. It is the downside of playing this particular race. It's something I do personally dislike when it comes to the Vampire Counts, and the actual playstyle in battles isn't necessarily that great, because the zombies and skeletal warriors in particular, they're not great units from a combat potential, but they do have a good amount of HP, so they can survive a lot of damage. So they're meant to take the hits. Whereas you just kill things with your lords, with your magic, all that. Now, you do have benefit to necromancers, and you do have benefit to white kings. So you should use those kind of benefits. Throw in a lot of necromancers, throw in a lot of heroes against your army. You don't have the same power that someone like Vlad has, where Vlad can just wipe out an entire army on his own. Krell isn't that strong. Kemler isn't that strong either. So you need to be a bit careful when choosing your fights, but the factions you're dealing with are not strong enough. Bretonia is not capable of defeating you in a field battle or a siege battle, especially. I mean, they could defeat you in a field battle if they actually if they uh, used its cavalry correctly. Uh, correctly, they don't. They 
kill their they suicide their cavalry most of the time when it comes down to it to individual battles so you're quite capable of dealing with them so yeah take bretonia then uh, or at least take some provinces of bretonia leave leoness for the red duke don't even believe leoness doesn't exist to you because if you touch leoness if you take over that settlement even if you sell it to the red duke you'll come in contact with Ivres and you'll come in contact with katik uh, same bo uh, goes by the way for bardolo just Try and not touch. Let the Red Duke deal with them. Like make an alliance with the Red Duke, then declare war on Aquitaine if they're still alive, or make a alliance with Grom. But don't bother really with the border territories. Like you will want to get the marchers of Coron, sure, but and that will uh, have will leave you with an exposed port. But otherwise, you should uh, you should take territory that's more easily defended inland. So Baston, your starting province, Artois, or Forest of Arden, Marienburg. Because although there is a port here, you do have that diplomatic relations with Norska, so you should be relatively well protected. And Marienburg is certainly a very beneficial settlement because of the Marienburg docks. It's almost always worth taking as a province, as either Karl Franz or Lewin. It's generally worth taking, though you can, they can have some issues because obviously they don't want to take the entire province because yeah, it's, a, it's a pain in the neck to try and hold it against the Norskans and Belakor, but you don't have that particular issue. So you can take the entirety of the wasteland and maintain good control of it. And long term campaign plan, yeah, just conquer the empire. You're ideally suited for it. Your army is going to be stronger than theirs and you'll be able to raise dead. So pick a huge fight so you can get... Uh, pick fights with large armies that you should be able to win and then raise very significant forces grave guard tier f uh, four units tier five units hell if you could get the terror guys that would be incredible potential in your campaign and that's really all there is to say about Kemler. he's got a lot of power he's got a good starting position with the exception of grungzent being over the all, all the way over there so you have to get over the support the forts themselves can be pretty annoying uh, to deal with in a manual battle. I would recommend actually auto resolving that, like bring two, maybe three armies for each of them and just auto resolve that situation. Uh, siege wise, when it comes to Bretonia, Bretonia does have some substantial garrisons on paper. In practice, these units are pretty pathetic, actually, because they're. Uh, they're we are looking at men at arms with pikes, with spears and shields. Um, they're not going to be really good units in a fight. So in an actual manual battle, even if you're going to end up having to fight a lot of sieges, in an actual battle, your army is better than what Bretonia has in their campaign. Take advantage of that. That's all there is to say. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And I'll see you boys and girls next time.